What are the upcoming changes to the PL900 exam? And how will they affect you if you are going to take the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals exam? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. The PL900 exam tests your understanding of the concepts around Microsoft Power Platform. So this is to say Canvas apps, model-driven apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agent, Power Pages, AI Builder, and more. It is a level 900 exam, so it is a fundamentals exam. It is not testing how these things can be done, but that you have the knowledge that these things can be done. If I scroll down, you'll see that the skills that are measured are describe the business value of Microsoft Power Platform, identify the core components of it, and demonstrate the capabilities of Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. However, as of the 24th of March 2023, this last one is going to change to demonstrate complementary Microsoft Power Platform solutions. Now, why might you want to take the PL900 exam? Well, it shows you and your employer and perhaps new employers that you understand the capabilities of the Microsoft Power Platform. So while it doesn't show that you can actually do them, it means you've got a good basis of knowing what is out there and you can have in your mind how it interacts with other things. And if you are an American student, you can be eligible for two college credits. Now, the details behind the PL900 exam are shown in the PL900 study guide. So if I click on this, you can see on the left hand side the study guide. And it is broken down into skills as of the update and skills prior to the update. And there's also the change log. And you can see a lot of the changes are said to be major. So on the left hand side, we're going to have a look at the skills measured prior to the 24th of March 2023. And on the right hand side, the skills measured after that. So first of all, the major elements. Demonstrate the capabilities of Power BI used to be 20 to 25 percent it is going to be only 10 to 15 percent the focus has really narrowed in for power bi power apps has gone down from 25 to 30 percent to 20 to 25 percent power automate has gone up from 10 to 15 percent to 15 to 20 percent and the capabilities of power virtual agents it used to be one to five percent so that was really insignificant number of marks now it has been bundled with a couple of additional solutions and is now 15 to 20%. So let's have a look at the individual categories. And we're going to start with describe the business value of Microsoft Power Platform and describe the business value of Microsoft Power Platform services. Now you can see the words have really changed. For instance, gain insights into data by using Power BI has changed into Describe the value of Power BI to gain insights into data. Now, I won't in this video be going through all of the changes to the words, but have a look at the major changes which have happened. So in this section, there have been three new items. You will be asked to describe the value of Power Pages to build websites. So Power Pages used to be known as portals. And in fact, you'll see on the web, portals and Power Pages used interchangeably. However, Power Pages is now its own standalone product as well as being incorporated into the Power Platform. There is also Describe the value of Microsoft Dataverse to organize business data and Describe the value of AI Builder to enhance apps and flows. Now, out of the three of these, the one that is really new is Power Pages. The portals used to be part of the PL900 but was then removed in one of the 2022 updates and has now come back into the PL900 requirements. Describe the business value of extending business solutions by using Microsoft Power Platform has really been slimmed down. So while we still have described how Microsoft Power Platform business solutions can consume Microsoft Azure services, the explicit reference to Azure Cognitive Services has been removed. Additionally removed, are how they can consume third-party apps and services, especially with the help of App Store. Describe Microsoft Power Platform Administration and Security has also been 
slimmed down. So Describe Data Policies is no longer in the new version, as is the Microsoft Power Platform governance capabilities and analytics. Going into the core components, which are now called the foundational components of Microsoft Power Platform, Describe Differences Between the Dataverse and Dataverse for Teams has been removed. Indeed, everything to do with Teams and SharePoint has been removed in the new version. Also removed is Describe How to Use Common Standard Tables to Describe People, Places and Things, and Describe Solutions and Their Purpose. While the Describe Connector section uses different words, it is essentially the same thing. Going in to demonstrate the capabilities of Power BI, this has really been slimmed down. However, there is a new item here. In the Compare and Contrast Dashboards, Workspaces and Reports section, there is also Paginated Reports. This is done using the Power BI Report Builder. Also new is adding visualizations to dashboards by using Q&A. Topics which have been removed include Describe the Power BI Security Model and Describe using Power BI in mobile apps. Describe and implement aggregate functions, so that is sum, count, min, max. Identify available types of data sources, including Microsoft Excel, and describe use cases for shared datasets and templates apps. However, some of these are useful in the new version of the exam. Now added also is describe how AI insights help identify anomalies and trends in data. This is really part of the visualization controls but it is an addition to the controls which have been mentioned here. Going into the Power Apps section, then you can see again a fair slimming down. The things which have been removed are Publish and Share an App, both in terms of the Canvas apps and the model-driven apps. Describe Embedding into Microsoft Teams. Again, I said everything to do with Microsoft Teams has been removed from the PL900 exam. It's still there in the PL100 exam and describe use cases for formulas. However, I think that's still part of use cases and capabilities of Canvas apps. If we go into the Power Automate section, again, this has been slimmed down. Describe loops and conditions, including switch, do until, and apply to each, and describe expressions has been removed. However, this is the one time that Microsoft Teams has been added, just in a general sense to describe Power Automate use cases for approvals, which is in the previous version, and Microsoft Teams, Outlook, SharePoint, and Forms. In other words, how Power Automate gets the triggers that will start it from happening, and then the actions which allow you to save it into Outlook or Teams, for example, sending an email, adding it to a SharePoint list, and so on. Another thing that has been removed is any reference to business process flaws. It is now just cloud and desktop flaws. Going down into Power Virtual Agents, again, this has been slimmed down, so it is now described the use cases, describe the purpose of topics, entities, and actions, and create topics by using suggest topics from an existing frequently asked question. So the actual requirements to build and publish a basic chatbot have been removed, as has some of the ideas from the authoring canvas. However, I think to know better use cases for Power Virtual Agents, you do need to have an idea of what it can do. And therefore knowing that messages, questions, conditions, and trigger phrases exist is very helpful. Describe the capabilities of Power Pages is new. So portals used to be in the PL900 exam. They were then removed. Now they're being added back in. Now the requirements for the Power Pages are fairly similar to what they used to be except there's no knowledge here required explicitly for the components. However, describe use cases for Power Pages. It helps if you know what components are, so the various sections and text boxes, video, images, that sort of thing. An additional requirement, how to share data externally. Well, the previous version, or the several previous versions, did require you to have knowledge of components, and that did include lists which is how to share data externally. And then finally, describe the capabilities of the AI Builder. So in the old version, this was previously mentioned in the skills measured, but has been removed from this document. 
it used to be, as of the 27th of December 2022, that there were four requirements. Identify the business value of AI Builder, describe models, describe how Power Apps and Power Automate can consume AI Builder data, and also how it is consumed in Microsoft Teams and Microsoft SharePoint. In the new version, as of the 24th of March, you will have describe complementary Microsoft Power Platform solutions. So that includes virtual agents and the AI builder as well as the Dataverse. And you will also have describe the use cases for AI Builder. Well, that requires the knowledge of the models, which models are available, and describe the life cycle to create an AI Builder model. So in addition to knowing what the models are, you also need to know that some of them are pre-built and some of them require training. So as you can see, there have been a lot of changes to the PL900. A fair bit of slimming down, but some of the old items are still useful in the current version. If you would like some help with learning all of the skills required by the PL900 exam, then please have a look at our course at idodata.com. So in around 100 lessons, around 8 hours, we'll go through all of the requirements of the PL900 Power Platform Fundamentals exam. While you are not required as part of this exam to have knowledge of how to do things, I will be showing you how to do some of the things so that you've got a better idea of how everything builds together. So how to create your Power BI visualizations, how you can easily create Power Apps and Power Automate flaws. But the emphasis is on what knowledge you need for the PL900 exam. And then after that, you then might want to consider having a look at the PL100 exam, where I show you not the principle behind creating all of these apps, but actually how to create Canvas apps, model-driven apps, Power Automate flaws, and more. So for more information, please go to our website, idodata.com. Now, if you'd like to have more of a taste of what the Power Platform is, in the next video, we're going to have a look at what we can do with Power Platform Canvas apps in around 10 minutes. After that, we'll have a look at model-driven apps and Power BI and more. So you can get an idea of what the Power Platform is and see if it's right for you. And then I hope to see you in one of my courses. So please click on the video, which you should now see on the end screen to go to my next video all about Canvas apps. Thank you very much for watching this. If you like this video, then please click like. Why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for watching and keep learning.